Hi everybody, welcome back to Higher Ideas Podcast. Did you know that there is a creature on the Earth that is 1,600 football fields wide? 1,600 football fields wide. Not only that, it's 8,000 years old. Maybe even older. What am I talking about? Some kind of mythical creature? Does this thing even exist? Well, it is like a mythical creature. It's like a hydra, actually. The hydra is a creature who's, who has a million heads. You can chop off all the heads you want, and other heads grow back. And this creature is a lot like that. You can cut out most of its body and throw it away, and it would recover. It doesn't have a brain that you can separate from the body to kill the entire thing. It doesn't have an organ that you can stab that would stop it living. What am I talking about? What is this crazy giant creature? Well, it's a mushroom colony that lives in a forest in Oregon, USA. It's a mushroom that eats the roots of trees, and it exists pretty much under the forest. You see, if you were in that forest, you wouldn't even know that you're standing on this creature. You would see mushrooms here and there at the bottom of trees. You'd say, oh, over there, there is a mushroom or two. And look across the field, I see a couple more mushrooms over there, another bunch of mushrooms. And you'd think those are different mushrooms, but actually, they're the same species. They're the exact same creature. They're not even a different individual of that species. They are the exact same individual that has grown throughout this forest for 8,000 years. See, the way mushrooms grow is they send filaments, like roots, but these filaments actually are a lot more like uh, brain neurons, amazingly. And uh, they look for resources, they reach out, and then when they find a resource, they grab on and coalesce and pop out mushrooms to reproduce. So while the mushrooms look separate and spread out, they're actually just fruit growing on this massive underground creature. And like I said, you can't kill this creature pretty much without killing the entire forest, or that whole area of the forest, 1,600 football fields. A forest fire could sweep through and take two-thirds of that out, and it would still recover. Because unless you get rid of every speck of that thing, you will not defeat it. So what I'm describing here is a decentralized system. It's the perfect example of why a decentralized system is strong, and how a decentralized system um, copes. And that's the topic for today. Decentralization versus centralization. I'm expanding on this topic from my 002 videos about my Occupy experience, and uh, that's where I ran into this concept of decentralization versus centralization, because the Occupy movement is supposed to be a decentralized movement, but on my particular camp it became extremely centralized, uh, probably in a sinister way. Um, the organizers that started grabbing power and started grabbing influence and controlling every single little thing that we were trying to do um, quickly became centers of power. The camp became centralized and because of that it became weak and it rotted away. So I got a very personal beef in that sense against centralization and I got to see firsthand what happens, what the difference is between a decentralized system and a centralized one. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's break down the two systems. So centralization is perfectly represented in a pyramid, a triangle. We all know the term pyramid scheme, and that's a scheme where you have a bunch of people at the bottom doing a lot of work, and then they have a few people above them that basically take their profits, give them a cut, send the profits up and uh, to their superiors, which is less people, and those people report to less people, and those people report to less people until you get to the top of the pyramid. See that the base gets smaller and smaller as you move up, and then at the top you have one person or maybe a small handful of people that basically call the shots and mostly take an unreasonable size of the profits. Not only that, but they can, call, they can uh, direct the entire system in any direction they want. That's a centralized system. But there's a huge weakness in that system in that that person at the top or the lower ranks below him where there's just a few people, those are very weak places. Those are very weak points of attack. If you wanted to corrupt the whole system, 
you would just have to corrupt the guy at the top. Or the people below him. Or both. It's not hard to corrupt a few people. It's not hard to assassinate, or intimidate, bribe, coerce, uh, convince, uh, manipulate a single person or a small group of people. And it's very tempting to do when those people can control an entire system for you. And that's the story of what we're living in today. Everything is centralized today. All of human society seems to be built on this shape. And maybe that worked for a while, but today it, it really seems to be falling apart. Maybe it's because greed has brought too much influence and too much resources to the top, and the bottom of that pyramid is starting to crumble away, which means everything's going to fall down. Or maybe it's just because it's a weak system overall, and it's not meant to survive. And nature, the laws of nature are everywhere, even in a modern society, even in a city. The laws of nature are inescapable. The laws of nature say that a weak system will fall, and a strong system will survive. So that brings us to decentralization. What shape would describe decentralization? Well, I guess the only one would be a circle, because there is no point on a circle that you could pull apart from another point. Uh, you can't point to a certain uh, edge on a circle and say, ah, that one looks a little different than the other. No, it's even all throughout. There is no leader in a decentralized system. There is no one position of power, or even ten positions of power. The positions of power are spread out equally throughout. The leader of a decentralized system is the system, the entire system as a whole. So how do you bribe that system, that leader, that is everyone? How do you make secret backroom deals when you have to talk to everybody to do it? How do you threaten with death a leader that is the entire group. You see, even if you bribe that system, all you're doing is enriching the entire system. <laughs> so sure, bring on the bribes, you know? We'll all get richer. There's so much strength to a decentralized system when it comes to a society. And we should really start looking at this as uh, maybe the model, the new model for society as we move forward. In fact, it's already started happening. The internet is a little blip of decentralization. The structure of the internet is centralized. It's weak. Uh, there are points you can attack physically on the, the network that would bring down huge chunks of the network, if not the entire thing. Uh, you know, Obama apparently has a kill switch now where he could just push a button and stop the entire uh, internet. How is that not the most disgusting example of centralization for the most sinister reasons? It's, it's, uh, it's really sad the way people in power are trying to make the internet into a pyramid shape. Right now the internet, although physically is a pyramid shape, the functionality of the internet is decentralized. Everyone is contributing to the internet equally if they want to, or more or less, but the point is anyone who cares to contribute can contribute right now. And they can make a huge splash if they do something that's worthy of attention or uh, that's, that's very beneficial, or that is exciting, or very original. I mean, it's a decentralized natural system. It's growing beautifully in that way. And so far they haven't managed to triangularize the functionality of the internet, but they've done it to its physical structure, so there is a risk there. But we have to defend the circle that is on the internet the circular way that the internet is working right now, uh, functionally. We can't let them put choke points in place that they can control in the form of laws, in the form of bureaucracies, in the form of regulation. We have to leave it alone because it is the first step of the future society. The internet allows us to build a society where there will not be a pyramid shape of government because we will all be able to vote instantly if we want. If we set it up right, if we set it up safe and legitimately, we can have a system where we can vote every single day or constantly, like American Idol or something. You can thumbs up or thumbs down the leader or, the, or particular decisions that uh, the group has made. And if enough thumbs down happen, well, you know what? We're not going that way anymore. We're not going to war. We're not polluting the environment, etc. 
instead of trying to convince a hard-headed, corrupt, bot member of government that will not listen to you, we would just have to click a button on the internet. And if enough people click that button, there you go, the decision is made. Who needs a fucking leader anymore? It's an archaic system that's based on a lower level of technology. We're ready for a decentralized society. Decentralized banking, decentralized corporations, production, decentralized government, decentralized everything, decentralized cities. Yes, it sounds like a huge task, but societies grow over time, and if we choose a direction, we could do it one bit at a time. And it's worth doing, because what you'll get as a result is a stronger, more resilient society, an almost uncorruptible society, a happier, more even society, a balanced society, where you don't have a class that's living high on the hog while others suffer in poverty. To make themselves richer, they would have to enrich the entire system, and everyone would rise together. These are the benefits of decentralization. So if you're sick of corruption, if you're sick of lies, if you're sick of the bullshit, be sick of centralization, because that is the true face of your enemy. And start looking for ways to decentralize. And start asking for decentralization. Or else, corporations will keep buying corporations. Higher up levels of government will keep robbing power from the lower levels, from the people, taking rights away, and giving themselves rights. Everything will keep gravitating to the top of that pyramid until your legs buckle, you who are holding it up, and the whole thing is going to come falling down. And this thing is going to happen pretty damn soon if we keep going this way. So why not now? Why not start? Why not start building towards decentralization? If we want to survive, that's the way to do it.